world champion and world record holder in the sport of freediving, uh, which is breath hold freediving. And William uh, remains the first and only man to dive to a depth of 100 meters or more, unassisted, completely unassisted. He is the director of Vertical Blue, uh, a company where, which um, brings freediving to the world, based in the Bahamas here. And uh, William is an author and also uh, an amazing man who's really bringing awareness to the world around nature and how important the oceans are and what's happening within, within the oceans and wildlife, etc. So he's a wonderful ambassador and we're just super happy to have you here, mate. So look, I remember, I remember it was oh, a long time ago, you and I were having a coffee in Malmo in Sweden. Do you remember that? I don't remember the coffee part because I normally don't drink coffee. <laughs> Maybe I was having an orange juice or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you I remember having coffee. a coffee. And, uh, and then we, we were having a chat. You know, I was interviewing you around, uh, just super curious around what was going on through your head uh, when you're diving. And I asked you, you know, what are you paying attention to when you're diving? And, and you know, what are you thinking about? And, uh, you know, you said to me, uh, well, you know, often a thought will come into my head that, you know, this is the last breath I'm ever going to take or turn around. I might, I might, uh, you know, I might want to skip this, this dive today. And, um, and, uh, and you said to me, you know, I'm so bored with all that bullshit that goes on in my head <laughs> that I don't pay attention to it anymore. And, uh, and I was like, wow, so what are you actually paying attention to? And, and you categorically looked me in the eye and said, I'm paying attention to the silence in between those thoughts. And so, you know, in my experience of working with athletes and having been an athlete myself, the ability to be able to switch off the brain is something that uh, really creates super high productivity. It helps athletes go to another operational level. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's one of the most important things for business leaders and people in business to learn, um, especially in these modern day times where everything is just running at such a pace. So... I'd really love to pick your brain on, um, you know, one or two things that you do or that you could share with our audience today around, you know, how do you learn to switch that off? And maybe we can, you know, give them some tools today that they can take away, uh, that they can immediately apply to be able to still this mind and, and come into the moment. And uh, yeah, so mate, the world is yours. I'll open it up to you. Sure, yeah. So what I'm doing is is obviously a different kind of activity to what you would be doing if you're in a, in a kind of an operating environment, um, working in a business where you have to be concentrated and focused. Whereas for me, it's obviously more efficient to be able to shut down the brain completely. Um, and this is an extremely oxygen greedy organ. It, um, it only weighs about 2% of our of our body mass, but it consumes at rest 20% of our oxygen stores. So being able to slow that down or make it more efficient has huge returns. Um, but, and, and so, yeah, a lot of what I'm doing is, is trying to lengthen those gaps between the thoughts or trying to replace the possibility of the negative thoughts with um, some kind of a menial task for the brain to perform, like counting the strokes as I'm swimming or kind of humming a really simple tune like green sleeves in my head or something. So that allows me to um, kind of placate or put off those negative thoughts um, from coming in. But one of the, the tricks that I've found, um, which, which I think could apply here, is that we often kind of tend to get caught up in a spiral with these negative thoughts when they come along like, it'll be a manifestation of some kind of insecurity that you have about the project that you're working on at the moment or something. And so this negative thought will pop up and the tendency is to try and kind of take it on, like to combat it with, by manufacturing some line of reasoning um, that will prove it wrong. Or in the case of like, oh, I'm no good, I can't do this. Then you'd like start to kind of go down that, that death right. spiral yeah. into reasons why that might be the case or why it's not in kind of arguing with yourself. And that whole process is, is counterproductive. Um, so you want to, as 
quickly and as, as efficiently as possible, try and eject yourself from that, that death spiral. Um, and the way to do that is to just be able to create a sufficient gap. Um, or one of the techniques is to, is to create this gap so that the, it's, there's an interruption, I guess. And this applies not just to negative thoughts, but also to, to emotions. We're taught like, if you wanna deal with a, a negative emotion like anger or something, if you're able just to, to um, kind of create a gap so that you're not angry for a period of time, then it doesn't feed itself and it, and it can dissipate. And I think the same thing applies with these, these negative traps or spirals that we get into. If you're able just to um, interrupt it, and you can do this through a technique such as um, like mindfulness or concentrating on your breathing. So just, you just kind of take a break, sit there and bring your awareness, bring your attention to your breathing. You're trying to breathe with your diaphragm because it's a more relaxed way of, of breathing. And just following it with your breath, uh, with your mind for say 10 breaths. And that might take a minute, minute and a half. And during that time, you'll be just focused on, on your breathing um, and able to take yourself away from that kind of negative spiral. Excellent, mate, excellent. So what you're suggesting there is, is when our thoughts get in the way, um, they, you know, our, we start to communicate and behave both based on negative thinking or positive thinking and the key is is to be able to untrap yourself from any negative thoughts or negative emotions that take over stress or or anger or etc yeah so yeah that's mm. the, the the big the big uh, challenges is is you know to be able to do that consistently <laughs> And uh, so do you have any uh, advice for, for everyone on, sure, that's, that's great to be able to do, but how do you remind yourself to do that? Or how do you catch yourself so that when they do come up, instead of it taking over, you actually get back in the driver's seat and are able to catch yourself and be aware of it and then take action? Mm, yeah, there, therein lies the rub because um, that's one of the more tricky, tricky things about it. And we can often um, go for a long period of time before we even realize that we're in one of those kind of negative feedback, death spiral things. Yeah. Um, and that you're not being productive. You're just kind of wasting your time with with this this scenario thinking. And so the solution to that, I think, is to, to have some kind of a practice of uh, mindfulness or meditation as part of your daily routine, if possible. And even if it's just kind of like five, 10 minutes in the morning, something like that, it's training. It's training your mind to be aware of your own awareness, so to be aware of your own consciousness. And by doing just like a small piece of dedicated um, mental training like that, mindfulness training, as part of your day, then it will allow you for the rest of the day to be, I think, more vigilant and more aware when those um, kind of uh, unproductive negative moments arise. Got it. So do you um, meditate or practice mindfulness? And, and maybe you can just explain what, what's the difference between mindfulness and, and meditation, that you, if you can explain that a little bit to us. Yeah, there's, um, there's many different ways to go about a practice of meditation or mindfulness, um, but in essence, apologize for the notifications, let me turn it off. In no. essence, um, it's, it's just about um, being aware of, of your own self, your own awareness, um, and witnessing everything that arises in that, because we aren't our thoughts. If you really pay attention, and a lot of people have spoken about this more eloquently than I can, but if you pay attention, then you notice that the thoughts arise in your mind. Um, we don't call them into being, they just kind of pop up. If someone tells you choose a number between one and 10, you don't choose that number, it pops into your head and either you validate it or not. And so, yeah, the, where was I going with that? Um, yeah. These, these thoughts um, are spontaneous and occur in the same way that when we're listening, like you're listening to me now, you're hearing a voice that's coming out of the computer or the device. In the same way, our own thoughts are just coming out of our subconscious, um, other parts of the brain and being 
displayed to our own awareness. And the only thing that we are in essence is that, is that observer, that witnesser, the, the, the awareness itself. Um, and so mindfulness med or meditation practice is all about just identifying with that. So noticing that in, in essence, that's all we are. Um, and when you, yeah, when you kind of get a deep experience like of, of that, a visceral experience, then it allows you to be more detached from emotions, from negative thoughts. It, has, it allows you more equanimity in your day-to-day -day life. And so, yeah, it's really powerful.